39. Uh, yeah, Dwight Clark Legacy Series is coming to the California Theater in San Jose on the 16th. Uh, they're going to have a round table that night, among other things. This round table is going to include natural born leaders with Steve Young, Jeff Garcia, Brock Purdy, and uh, our next guest, a uh, former member of the Niners, Chiefs, the Washington football team, three time Pro Bowl quarterback, NFL Comeback Player of the Year in 2020. They should name that award after him, by the way. Alex Smith with us today. Alex, belated happy birthday. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Uh -huh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm doing great. Great to be on. How are you guys doing? We're doing fine. Yeah, I, I wanted to start with the same thing I started with Jeff Garcia when he was nice enough to join us this week. Alex, what does it mean to you to be part of this lineage of outstanding 49er quarterbacks? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I'm not sure I'm in the lineage with, with a lot of these guys, but humbled, to be honest. You know, uh, when I first got drafted, I mean, like, there's no organization that sets the bar higher when it comes to quarterback play than the 49ers. I mean, and you can go all the way back. You go to Y.A. Tittle and John Brody. You know, obviously that the Hall of Famers and greatest ever, you know, maybe in, in Joe Montana and Steve Young and, you know, humbled to be up there. Jeff Garcia, who is a phenomenal player in his own right, who I know well, and obviously see what Brock's doing. I think he's maybe one of the best story in all of sports. Uh, lucky enough to have gotten to know him over these last couple of years. So uh, I know all these guys that we've never been together uh, and had a conversation like this. So I'm, I'm pretty interested in where this thing's going to go. Uh, but yeah, you know, humbled to, to have my, you know, count myself included in this. You know, Alex, it, it was interesting because I was going to follow up on that and say, have you guys ever all been together? Have you and I'm pretty sure, you know, as you spoke about the legacy of the 49ers and quarterback room that you got you're talking about. Have you I know you've had the opportunity to probably speak to Steve Smith and, and Jeff Garcia and Brock Purdy separately. But at the Dwight Clark Awards, you guys will actually all be together for the first time. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a one of a kind conversation. I think fans are going to get an opportunity to hear. Uh, you know, listen, guys, you're just so busy and all over the place. And, you know. Again, lucky enough that we all keep up and, and uh, you know, still have relationships, but never have all been together like this. And certainly not going to be talking, you know, all things 49ers and, and quarterbacking and, and anything else that comes up. So, uh, again, it's, it, I think it'll be an awesome, awesome experience for, for everybody in the audience. And again, myself included, kind of again, interested uh, <laughs> what, 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 what is going to be the topic of conversation, you know? That's great. I'm looking forward to it, too. I have no idea either. Uh, Alex Smith, nice enough to join us. He's going to be part of the Dwight Clark Legacy Series, California Theater in San Jose on coming up this weekend uh, or coming up soon. Uh, 16th. 16th. Yeah, 16th. 16th. Yep. And by the way, there's going to be great auction items up for bid. 100% of the proceeds raised from the event go to the Golden Heart Fund, which uh, assists former 49ers. Uh, Alex, you mentioned Brock Purdy, of course, and a lot of people are still giving Brock Purdy that kind of backhanded compliment of, you know, game manager, which we hear a lot. Just just to clarify, isn't being a game manager, isn't managing the game a really important part of being a quarterback? Yeah, you know, listen, I, I you know, I, I battled this label a lot in my career. Uh, you know, it's far more deserving for me. Uh, though, though, I mean, Brock Purdy, I mean, all he did this last year was lead the NFL in almost every single passing category. I mean, throwing the ball downfield, touchdowns outside the pocket, throwing under pressure. I mean, this guy was number one in all of them. I, I think it couldn't be further from the truth. I think he is the real deal. Uh, I think he's only going to continue to prove all these doubters wrong. But listen, for a lot of people, it doesn't add up. It, it doesn't make sense to them how the last pick in the draft, a guy who's, you know, six foot, you know, nothing. He, 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 he can't throw it 80 yards. He doesn't run you know, a, a four, four, he, he, he's not 240 pounds. It just doesn't make sense to them. Um, and I think that's kind of what's intriguing about playing quarterback. Like it's not about the measurables, right. Um, you know, accuracy, uh, you know, under being able to play under pressure. I mean, certainly poise, courage, these things that, that, that Brock, um, you know, exemplifies and plays with every single Sunday, they, they just don't add up to people out there. And so it must be something else for them, right? It's got to be the system or the players around him, which I think couldn't be further from the truth. So uh, I'm excited for him. I certainly have fun with my time on TV, you know, pushing against some of these crazy narratives. I like the fact that he's a game manager. <laughs> um, and so excited for him. He's a great young kid. I think he has an incredibly bright future. You know, it's his first, he's finally getting his first off season as a starter. Uh, I'm yeah. excited, you know, uh, for this team's growth and his included in that. Joined by Alex Smith, of course, former 49er and 
quarterback of the other team. I won't speak on that here on Sacktown Sports 49er, uh, home of the 49ers here. And, of course, Alex, I, I want to get to that, but I definitely want to make sure we mention Dre Greenlaw will be presented by Fred Warner, one of my guys, and Dwight Clark, the Dwight Clark Award. With that being said, Alex, and I've heard you say and you spoke about your analysis here. You know, we get to see you on the pregames and, and, and half times and post games. In your narrative, did you think the uh, Super Bowl changed when Dre Greenlaw got hurt? Yeah, I mean, listen, he's a guy, and I'm excited to see him get his award and, and hear you know his thoughts and where he's at in his rehab. But he's a guy that plays with so much passion and energy. And, and when you and you know, I've been lucky enough to play with guys like this that they, they're such tone setters, you know, for your team. And and so many of the guys around him feed off of that energy. And Dre just seems like that, right? Like his. Even watching on TV, like the energy he plays with and the passion he plays with, it just jumps off the screen. And I can't help but think, yeah, absolutely. How would that? I mean, he's one of the one of the toughest guys on the field, and you know, one of your one of the best tacklers. And again, he just plays with such intensity. And so for him to go down and in the manner he did, you, you got to think that that affected that defense and entire team. So, and they still were what you know. It, the ball bounces differently on one of those plays. You know, they're, they're walking out of there with the Lombardi. Um, it was an amazing Super Bowl. Unfortunately, they, they came out on the wrong side of it. But absolutely, I think you'd have to think it, it affected that. So, again, I'm, I'm anxious to hear, see him get his award, uh, hear, what he, hear where he's at, what's on his mind, where he's at on his rehab. So it will be a great conversation as well between him and Fred. Uh, Alex Smith with us. And, Alex, that there's – there's no way in the short time we have with you that we could do justice to your story of your comeback, but I'm going to ask you a question anyway. Uh, you know, the ESPN doc was one of the most inspirational things uh, I've ever seen. What would you say ultimately was the most satisfying aspect of that, of that whole journey for you? Oh, oh man. Um, you know, to try to sum it up. I mean, certainly I think for me that I, I'm so lucky. I mean, that, that doesn't even put it into perspective to be where I'm at and like to still have my leg uh, to, have, to have gone back and played football. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I know. So long, the prognosis was, was <laughs> not good. And so, so lucky that it, that it progressed as far as it did. But, you know, for me, with the, certainly the documentary, I, I enjoyed certainly being authentic about my experience. And listen, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't some cheesy you know, Disney story of just triumph and, and, you know, like, that's not it. Like I, I was so lucky to have so many amazing teammates uh, that helped me get back. Um, you know, and a big part of them was certainly I, I, my time with the military. You know, I was lucky enough to get what's called the secretary of defense designation and it's for civilians that are deemed to have what's called a warlike uh, injury. And so I got access to military medical care and, you know, they were the experts at lower leg injuries like this, right. To, to our, decades of wars in the Middle East and, you know, certainly, you know, lots of servicemen and women coming back from roadside bombs and and IEDs and things like that with, with injuries that for whatever reason were not, you know, dissimilar to mine. And Mm so when I got down there, I mean, I was not in a great state of mind. You know, I, I'd been, I'd been stuck in a wheelchair for five months. Uh, I was depressed. I thought life as I knew it was over and it was an incredible experience, life changing for me. Um, I would never even have dared to try to play football again if it wasn't for that place. Um, and so incredibly thankful for it, for the people down there that, that uh, again, their example, uh, being around them. And, and again, to go to like Drake Greenlaw, like it was infectious. It, it, it changed my life. And so I, I, I enjoy telling that story, right? Like, I, again, uh, we, we all need people around us. We all have our, our, our down times. Uh, and again, for me, you know, knowing you you can be that for one another. And so certainly if my, my story helps uh, anybody going through it, uh, that, that would be amazing. Yeah. To that point, um, obviously your story has inspired a lot of people. How does that make you feel to have gone through everything you went through and then you get done with it and you achieved what you wanted to achieve and you have your health and then you look around and you realize a lot of people have benefited from that. How, do, how does that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, it's, uh, I know what, what those kind of seeds of hope meant to me when I was struggling. Um, that's what you live on, right? I mean, these, these little seeds of hope that somebody maybe, um, you know, planted. And again, for, you know, to be a link in that chain, uh, again, is, is, is really satisfying and humbling. Again, that, that hopefully I could, you know, be able to pass that along. 
joined by Alex Smith, of course. He'll be on the panel at the Dwight Clark Award Legacy Dinner coming up May 16th. And uh, Alex, before we definitely let you go, I, I have to ask the pressing question that's in my mind. But I'll, I'll speak about the, uh, the, the Dwight Clark jersey, Joe Montana helmet, Jerry Rice print, custom event helmet signed by Steve, Alex, and Brock. So many different things that's jumping off on May 16th. Golf packages, exclusive wine tasting experiences. Which one right now would Alex Smith be lining up if he had the silent auction to go? <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. I'm, I am golfing more these days. I'm, I'm not getting any better, but I do enjoy it. And so I, I, I think I'd take a, take a couple of looks at the golf package. But, I mean, listen to the names you just said. I mean, listen, uh, it, it doesn't get any bigger than Dwight Clark. Like, listen, it's, it's named after him. Everything that he embodies as a person, everything that he did for this organization. I mean, he's just such a special, special person. Um, again, humble to be a part of it, you know, really kind of the, the, the starting point for the Golden Heart Fund. I mean, the Niners, the only organization in football that has something like this, that, that's helping struggling alumni uh, in their, you know, in their life after football. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I don't have any Dwight stuff like that. That would be for me something that, that I think would be incredibly special. Yeah, that definitely would. Definitely for me now. OK, enough of the softballs, Alex. I got to come with I got to come hard at you. brother. For you, Alex. San Francisco 49er right. jerseys on your left. Kansas City Chiefs jerseys on your right. I'm just saying, pick one. Don't give me the coin flip. I don't need the 50-50. Yeah, I, I need you to make a decision right here on the 49ers radio network. It was so easy for so long. It was like, listen, I got my AFC team and I got my NFC team, and it was just so easy. I had no idea that they would be playing in the Super Bowl, you know, twice in the span of, what, four years? Man. Uh, uh, and so hard to take offense. You know, listen, I, I uh, these are – I was, it was 20 years ago when I got drafted by the Niners. Like these are relationships that I've had for so long. It's, I, I live in the Bay Area. My my entire family were Niner fans, and so so tough to see him go against the Chiefs. Who again? These are like I had such special years in Kansas City. Those are guys that I know incredibly well. It's, you know, it's the regime that that traded for me that I played with for five years. So really, really torn. But I'll just say this: Listen, I, I this Niner team, Kyle. John Lynch at the top, all the way down. You know, Trent Williams is a former teammate of mine. I, he needs a Super Bowl ring. Um, he's one of the best left tackles in the history of football. Like, I love Brock Purdy. So, I want to see this team get it. Uh, I'm hopeful that somehow their experience at the Super Bowl and being that close catapults them over the edge and, and they get it because uh, they, they are deserving. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that answers your question. but that, Oh, man, that was like a Steph Curry Still pair elusive. and half, half jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Still elusive in the pocket. Alex, yeah, yeah. stepping up. I see the five-step drop straight to the step up. Yeah. Uh, if I may, Alex, I asked this question once to Drew Bledsoe, and he gave a great answer because we, you know, we all sit here at home. We watch the games. Well, why did he do this? Why did he do that? What do you think is the um, the trickiest part or the hardest part about playing quarterback that most of us never think of? And I'll tell you, I asked Drew Bledsoe, as I say once, he said people have no idea how many decisions you have to make before you even get to the line of scrimmage. Uh, and I'm yeah. just wondering, from your uh, vantage point, what's something about playing quarterback that you think most of us just have no idea what goes on? To me, I mean, maybe and this is what Drew was talking about. Like, you just have to be able to compartmentalize so many different things, um, you know, because this, you have to you have to understand situational football so well, right? Like, you're out there with the ball in your hand every single play, and what's the right decision? on third and two in the first quarter, maybe one thing, but it, it could be a completely different thing given the way the game's played out in the second half, right? Like, and you got to understand the nuances of all that, uh, how the game's flowing, like how the matchup week to week, right? Like, are you playing a team with a big, big time offense uh, and no defense or vice versa, right? Like what's the, what's the bigger, how do you fit into the bigger chess match of, of that matchup, right? Like I think this last year was a great example of, of Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs, right? Like, this is a guy that forever they were this high flying gunslinging offense outscoring everybody. But like that, that, that equation changed this year. All of a sudden they were struggling at receiver. Kelsey was the only guy they've gotten older, but they had an elite defense. And so, you know, Patrick almost went into like quote unquote game manager mode and like, and it won him a Super Bowl, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, I think it was almost masterful and showing like that kind of growth that you got to find different ways to win. And uh, that's the hard, like the thing at quarterback. There is no like one way, and it's always changing. And you always have to be reading all these different 
you know, signs out there and, and taking in all this information and, and uh, it's, it's just constantly changing. So as a quarterback, again, you are making uh, so many decisions constantly and weighing all this stuff and this information. And again, you got to be able to compartmentalize all of it as well. Um, and so I just think in, in the, the older you get, that, that you certainly get better at it, but you also have the ability to take in more information too. So um, it's just kind of a constantly evolving thing. It doesn't seem fair that coordinators can disguise their defenses, Alex. That doesn't seem fair at all. Now that, that doesn't make it any easier for you, right? No, no. And now they're letting them wear single digits and they're lining up all over the place. So, you know, only getting, only getting harder on that front. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you real quick, how do the, yeah, uh, I'm saying it looks like we got to go, Alex. I apologize. I know you got things to do here. Thanks very much for your time. We will be uh, checking you out uh, May 16th uh, in San Jose for the Dwight Clark legacy series. Thank you very much, Alex. We appreciate it. Uh, enjoyed it very much. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, thanks Jay. Yeah. Alex Smith. I was going to ask him, you know, how the 49ers bounce back from that Super Bowl loss, the way his 49ers bounced back, kept getting back to the doorstep, but we'll do that another time. Uh, we have a couple tickets to give away. We do. Yeah. All right.